Swole Benji here. Today I am going to go over every single ZVZ build in the game. All right. So let's get started with the tank builds. All right. So I have a Camland Mace build here for you. This is for ZVZ. This will give you so many kills. You will be able to bunch up a whole bunch of enemies and make them very vulnerable for your Zerg to kill them. So let's get started. And you're going to start with the Martlock Cape. Now, what this does is it's going to give you 50% more defense when you drop below 25% HP. You're going to want to have this. This will save your life, okay? Now, you're going to use the Night Helmet with Displacement Immunity. Now, you're going to use this to get away or to not be displaced yourself. All right, and of course, for the passive, you're going to increase your crowd control duration. For your armor, you're going to use Demon Armor with Protection of the Fiends. Now, what this does is it reflects all the damage you take because you're going to be in the middle of the enemy pile. They're going to start hitting you. You're going to be reflecting that. Um, you also increase resistance for all your allies, which is your job as the tank, by a huge margin. Now, you yourself will have less defense, but you're in almost full plate. You'll be chugging a resistance potion. So don't worry about losing damage resistance when this is active. It is absolutely worth it for you to use. You're going to be using the crowd control passive, and you can just use Spirit Crush. It doesn't really matter because it's PvP. All right, so Hunter Shoes. This is what's going to cause people to be held longer. You're going to be using Rush, so always use Rush before you use your crowd control abilities, and you want to uh, reduce your cooldown rate. So that's the passives. on. And then finally, the Cam Land Mace. You're going to use the third Q, which is going to silence people. It looks like this. These a big silent circle. They can't cast spells. You absolutely want to drop this in the middle as many people as possible. For mobility, you're going to be using snare charts so you can jump around, and this will snare people. This will hold them in place. And finally, your vendetta, which is when you hit an enemy with this, it will pull everyone into the circle, and this is how you bunch up a bunch of people, okay? Now remember, for food, you're going to be using pork omelet because you want your cooldowns to be as short as possible so you can use more abilities and be more mobile. And the resistance potion is if you start taking damage, you chug one of these. And this is basically the Martlock Cape. It's, it's not quiet. It's 47.368 uh, defense. All right. So that is the Camland Mace. But using the same exact gear set, if you already have a Camland Mace in your Zerg, have a Soul Sith. Now, the Soul Sith is really good for also crowd controlling people. This thing is so, so annoying. All right. Um, by the way, on the on the weapon passive, you want to use crowd control when you auto attack. You won't be auto attacking much because you're just going to be mostly mobile. But if you do, this thing will build up your crowd control effects so much. Okay, so you're going to be using cartwheel for mobility. You're also going to be using stun run for mobility, okay? All your job is, as the soul Sith, is to shoot a tornado. This thing will pop people in the air, but if it, if it doesn't, it will slow them down dramatically. It's, it's a huge... Now, the tooltip does lie to you. It says that it's going to slow all enemies for 31 seconds. That is a complete lie. It only slows people as long as the tornado animation is active. So don't don't read into this. The tooltip is wrong. Just thought I'd let you know. Next up, and this is my personal favorite ZVZ build, the Grove Keeper, as known as the Pog Log. All right, so let's get into it. For your helmet, you're going to be using the Judicator helmet with the electric discharge and... Uh, increased crowd control duration. For the armor, you're going to be using Guardian Armor with Enfeeble Aura Authority, which increases crowd control duration. And then the third pass, that doesn't matter. All right, and then the same deal with the Hunter Shoes, just, just like the other build. Also Martlaw Cape, also Resistance Potion, Pork Omelet. Now for your Grove Keeper, you're going to be using the third Q ability, Iron Breaker. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. You could use a single target one, but Iron Breaker is going to help your Zerg the most. For your W, you're going to use Inertial Ring. This thing is just so overpowered. So basically what it does is it, po it pops a big-ass ring. And uh, if the enemy tries to run away, they become really slow when they hit this yellow part. It's really, really nice. And of course, for your passive, you're going to use Dead End Fighting, uh, which is increases your crowd code control duration. So the way the Pog Log works is you're going to use your boots, and then you're just going to jump in the middle of the pile, which stuns everybody. You're going to pop your ring, and then you're going to start slamming then pop your armor, and that's going to make everyone very weak. And then also, you have your helmet, and that's going to stun everybody. So you're just basically this hyper-mobile mega-stun monster that will stun everyone over and over and over. And this guy's trying to challenge me to a duel because it's a test realm, and he wants to test out his, his abilities. But essentially, if you start getting into trouble, you chug your resistance potion, your cape will keep you healthy, 
and you'll be able to jump out of there and you're super super tanky in this anyway like i'm sitting at 4000 hp the grove keeper gives you a bonus to maximum health you're not gonna die unless like something seriously goes wrong next up we have the hand of justice build this is more of a supplementary build you're gonna be using the knight helmet with displacement immunity so that you can't be knocked around this is very important for this build you're going to be using Judicator Armor after you've executed your combo so that you have more damage resistance and everyone that's piling into your area will be able to receive more healing. Alright, again with the Hunter Shoes, the Resistance Potion, the Martlock Cape. So here's the Hand of Justice build. You're going to be using the third Q. Now, you can use Inertial Ring in this build, but to get into better position, you're most likely going to be using Slowing Charge. That way you can hit everyone, they're slowed, and they're all lined up nice and juicy for your E spell which is Onslaught. So what this does is you're going to spin in this direction and it's going to basically grab everyone along the way and then bunch them up at the end of your position. So you're going to run towards the enemy and you're going to press W and then you're going to press E to bunch them all up and then you're going to slam them and then you're going to slam them again. Activate uh, your, your armor ability and you can also activate your helmet before you do all this. And what that's going to do is just bunch everyone up, make them very vulnerable to AoE explosions from your team. Now, if you're poor, because Hand of Justice is an Avalonian item, it is very expensive. If you are poor, you can swap to the Morningstar, which is not the same weapon class. All right, so this is a hammer and this is a mace. You're going to be using the Sacred Ground with the Snare Charge and then the Root Prison. So the Root Prison just does this and it holds people in place. It's not nearly as good as the Hand of Justice, but it is way, way, way cheaper so it is an option that you can use. All right, now we have the Grail Seeker build. This one is absolutely annoying to deal with in ZVZ. So here's how it works. You're gonna be using an Assassin Hood with Meditation because you're gonna be spamming your abilities like crazy, okay? Uh, Knight Armor with Wind Wall, which is going to be used to push people into a position or keep them from pushing a choke. Grail Seeker is so good at holding chokes, guys. It is one of the best choke holding weapons in the game. Like a, like a long bridge or just a narrow pathway, you do not want to have a Grail Seeker on the other side of that thing. All right, so now, because you're not going to be entirely up in the front lines, you can be if you want to, you don't have to. This build actually has some mana problems, so you're going to be using a Limhurst Cape to get your mana back so you can spam more abilities, okay? On the Grail Seeker, you're going to be using Cartwheel with Stun Run. Uh, you can also use Separator because you're going to be holding people down a lot. So if you want to run up and then pop them into your team, you can. But I really recommend just using Stun Run instead. Uh, and of course, you know, Soul Shaker and Dread, Dread Laden Fighting, which increases your crowd control when you do auto attacks. So here's how the build works, okay? You're going to run at the enemy, especially if there's a bunch in the line, and you're just going to start slamming down ease. That's going to put it on cooldown. And you're going to use your D helmet to get your cooldown back a slightly bit faster, not quite. But it did help a little bit there. And in the meantime, you're just going to run around and auto people and then cartwheel them and all that kind of fun stuff. You can push them back with a wind wall because you're hyper mobile, remember. You're, you're absolutely hyper mobile. And then, uh, you know, whenever your cooldowns come back, uh, you can slap down more of these stun lines and uh, people can't move. They're trapped in them. You run up to them, you wind wall them back into your team, and everything is good. It is such a stupidly overpowered, dumb just build that I hate fighting in ZVZ so much. Now this one's debatable if you can call it a tank or a support build, but I'm going to put it here anyway with the tank build. This is the Staff of Balance build, so you're going to use Cartwheel with Stun Run and of course your Mystic Rocks. And the way this build works is you are going to be buffing your allies who have dived into the enemy, but at the same time you're also going to act as an idiot magnet and hope that enemies attack you. Okay, so here's how the build works. You can use Hood of Tenacity or Helmet of Valor. Okay, so Hood of Tenacity, depending on the enemy's composition, you can use this to reduce the healing amount that the enemies receive. It does it like a negligible amount of damage, so don't worry about that part. Um, but uh, it reduces the healing that they cast as well, so if you dive healers with this, it's, it's all right. But personally, I use the Helmet of Valor because what this does is this will cleanse crowd control effects that's on your tanks, it's on you, but it will also purge all buffs that the enemy has, okay? And not, not like food buffs or potion buffs, sadly, but it, like, like if they buff up, like if you got some archers that are like charging up and stuff and, uh, you know, other builds are being zapped by an arcane staff, you pop this thing, it's gone. It's, it's basically an AoE purge. It's really good. So you're also going to actually use uh, Refreshing Sprint here. You don't have crowd control, really, so you're not going to be using Rush. 
And for the passive, you'll be using the Life Leech because you're going to be autoing. And it, these autos actually hit pretty dang hard. So the way the, this build works is once you or your tanks jump in, or you could you could jump in at the same time as your tanks, uh, you're, you're going to run in and you're going to pop your E, you pop your W, pop your Q, and just start stunning people. And then you're going to pop your armor. And hopefully people are hitting you because when they hit you while your armor is active, it's going to deal damage and silence them. All right, and then at some point, if you see someone with a bunch of juicy buffs, you just hit them with your helmet and buy buy buffs. It's 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 a very fun and hard to kill build. This this build is hyper mobile. It's very tanky. Uh, you become super tanky when you have mystics mystic rocks activated. Now for your cape, you're gonna be using Limhurst cape because this is mana intensive. Like just one combo used like what um, thirty percent of my mana bar, and I'm in full eight three with max spec on the test realm, guys. So. This is that's the staff of balance build. It's a real, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. All right, so let's talk arcane staff support builds. All right, so there are two main staffs that you would want to use. Though you can really use any of them. They're all pretty darn good. But the even song drops a sphere that reduces healing. It reduces damage dealt, and uh, it's just all around really really good. Uh, you won't be using this too much unless you know there's like a pack of enemies in front of you. But also the malevolent locust. Is a cheaper option it is just as good and what this is going to do is dispel and remove all debuffs all right and increase damage res resistance of your allies by a huge chunk so the really cool thing about this is that you can use the judicator armor right which also does the same thing pop that then pop your malevolent locust and you are super armored like you are hyper armored you're not no one's gonna hurt you right but the main thing that you're gonna be focused on is not so much your e ability is that your q ability you're going to pick targets that are being focused in the ZVZ and cast a shield on them. And also, you're going to pick your friends or someone with a very high damage weapon and use your W ability, Empowering Beam, to juice them up and give them tons of damage. Now, let me tell you, whenever you juice someone up and they blow up on a whole freaking Zerg, like someone uses an energy cannon and just melts everyone while you're juicing them up, you're getting all the kill, like you're sharing the kill credit with them. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Like I, I know it sounds kind of like a, like you're bending the knee to play a support build, but this support build is great. Also on the boots, use focus run. That's uh, my girlfriend's cat meowing. I don't know why, but uh, essentially focus run. You can't be crowd controlled while you're doing this, and it's going to restore your mana while you do it. Uh, for uh, potions, you're going to use resistance potion and pork omelet, uh, so that you can spam your spells more often and not die. And of course, Martlock cape. So that if you do get focused, you will be able to escape, especially if you have focused run. All right, so this build is kind of like a protect the president, protect the MVP build. This is the enigmatic staff. So what this does, what this staff does is you will conjure a shield constantly on one target. You also have your Q ability that puts on a shield and you're going to be using energy beam to feed your target infinite mana or you could juice them up with damage. It's up to you, honestly. But the way this build works is you're going to be using a robe of purity and if your MVP is in danger, you're going to use your robe and, and run at the enemy and bonk them away and then shield your, you know, target, okay? If you have one of these supports following you around, you will never die because you, have, you will have double shields, you will have knockback, you will have everything. Now this, this build is actually very mana intensive, so you're going to be using a Limhurst cape and you're going to be using Focus Run with the Scholar Sandals. Uh, but other than that, you're just going to use your helmet to get your cooldowns back. And uh, yeah, this is like uh, th this is the build that you want to use if you want to get some e girl attention. Okay, you find in yourself an e girl and use this build on her, and she's just going to uh, well probably do nothing because it's an e girl. This support build is the occult staff, which I like to call the pusher. So here's how it works: you're going to be using a knight helmet so people can't bonk you around and displace you. You're going to be using a knight armor because once you flank the enemy, you want to push them into your team and prevent their escape. You're going to be using just any leather shoes. It doesn't have to be hunter shoes, just for a refreshing sprint. All right. Um, now, you can use the Limhurst cape because it is mana intensive, though I would recommend a Martlock cape. I, I didn't put one on. Uh, so here's how it works. The occult staff, you're going to be using the, the shield, and you're going to be casting this mostly on yourself. Now, you're also going to be using motivating cleanse to cleanse your allies and possibly yourself. Now, for those that don't know, the occult staff increases your run speed in a big corridor, but it also slows enemies. So here's how it works. You cast this, you run forward, and then you wind wall the other direction and the enemy can't get away. You can also cleanse your allies and then shield yourself or your allies. 
And uh, that's pretty much it. It's just a frontline little support build. Next up, we have the Freeze Boy, as known as the Icicle Staff. So the way this works, it's pretty much the exact same build as the Occult Staff, just with an Icicle Staff. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to use Brush and not Refreshing Sprint. Cooldown reduction, you're going to be using Knight, Knight Armor, same deal, Knight Helmet, so you can't be displaced with the Marlock Cape, so you don't die with the Resistance Potion, so you don't die. Now, your Q spell, you really won't be using much, but you do want it on the first Q so that you can slow targets, okay? Uh, now, for your second, your W ability, you want Nova for mobility. And the way this works is you're going you're gonna to run into the enemy, just Zerg. You're going to cast your E spell, and it's going to slow everyone. You're going to be spamming Qs. When they're slowed, they can't run. You're going to push them around. You're going to root them with your, with your uh, blink ability there. And you're going to have your helmet activated so they, they can't push you around, okay? You can push them, but they can't push you. That's how the bully code works. Next up, we have the Curse Boy build, or the Damnation Staff. So the way this one works is you're going to dump a big, fat Cataclysm into the enemy Zerg. Now, this build is, is very squishy because you are forced to use Scholar Robe for the half-cast speed ability because otherwise this thing costs two and a half seconds to cast you ain't gonna get that off in a zerg but here's how we're gonna do it okay you're going to you're gonna run in you can use any boots i, I just have hunter shoes on because that's what i used in the last build you're gonna run you're gonna run in and you're gonna press r and d on the night helmet and you're gonna press e and that's just gonna curse everybody and then after that you're gonna try to hold some people down and then give them curse stacks um, but by then you might be dead because you are, you are in cloth, so you're going to be chugging resistance potions. Now, use a, f that was my steam, that was not your steam, that's my steam, okay? Don't worry about that sound. Uh, Fort Sterling Cape, uh, untouchable. What this is going to do is if someone tries to crowd control you while you're channeling your curse spell, your cataclysm spell, it, it will deny it. Okay, otherwise, use, use the Marlaw Cape if you don't want to die, all right? Alright, let's get into damage now. The fun builds in ZVZ, right guys? Okay, let's start with the Brimstone Staff, because it's the biggest one. It is the most damage. It's going to delete health bars. It is going to turn the tide of battle. If you if someone can land maces and you drop a meteor right in the middle, they're dead. They're gone. Okay, so let's talk about it. You're gonna be using the Brimstone Staff. You're gonna be using the Burning Field. Now, this is a new spell, the Searing Flame. I haven't actually played with it, so I, I can't tell you if it's good or not. Um, but your W spell, I like Wall of Flame because it's a huge utility, especially. This will save your life, okay? Uh, however, you can really use any of these spells. They're all really, really good for Z. Like, the Fire Staffs are amazing for ZVZ. Now, here's how the build works, okay? You're going to be using a Martlock Cape, but here's my suggestion, okay? If you use a Martlock Cape, you should really use a Night Helmet so you don't get knocked around. But if you use the Assassin Hood... You should really use a Fort Sterling Capes, uh, so again, you don't get knocked around while you're channeling, because if your meteor gets interrupted, it's really, really sad. You're going to be using the Scholar Robe so that you can cast your meteor faster, and you're going to be using Royal Sandals for more damage, and Assassin Hood so you can get your meteors back faster. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to wait for the tanks to jump in and pile everyone up, then you're going to press F, R, and then E, and you're going to just start dumping on them, just start, just start dumping on them, just start burning everybody, everyone must burn. Then get your cooldowns back and, uh, you know, just rinse and repeat. It's up to you. It's, uh, you're you're going to be melting health bars with this build. Alternatives to Fire Staff are the Blazing and the Dawn Song. Uh, instead of using Scholar Robe, because these have faster cast times, you can use this Cleric Robe. This will keep you alive, and if someone decides to hit you, then uh, you deal 30% more damage. So it's all good. But it's pretty much the same exact build. Uh, so, for instance, you're going to just cast this in the middle of wherever the tanks jump, and hopefully they can hold him... Hold the opponents here in this giant flame tornado. Otherwise, you'll be using the Dawn Song, which uh, is it's not nearly as strong as the Blazing Staff, but it does cover a wider area, so you'll hit more people. Uh, it also reduces the the healing that they cast. So if if your Zerg needs you know reduced healing you know debuffers, and you can go Dawn Song, but Dawn Song is pretty darn expensive. Um, I'm not gonna wait 17 seconds to show you what the spell is. If you're curious what the spell looks like, then get on the test room and try it out yourself. Alright guys, it's the Siege Crossbow. This one is actually really tricky to use. There's, there's a huge divide between good and bad Siege Crossbow users, and let me explain, okay? The good Siege Crossbow users actually run with the tanks and begin firing before the tanks even land. 
Okay, the bad siege crossbows come in afterwards and try to clean up and they, they don't get all their shots off, okay? But when you start hitting people with this volley, it's going to melt their health bar. So here's how, here's how it works. You're going you're gonna to run side by side with your tank and you're going to use your, your, your helmet ability, your boots, your armor, and right as they jump, you're going to start setting up your siege crossbow and you're just going to start blasting. And this is going to, you're going to hit everyone that the tanks pull and that the tanks hold down and they will be dead okay now because you're channeling that's why we use the night helmet so we can't be displaced and interrupted we use the cleric robe so that if someone retaliates with a big aoe explosion we don't immediately die and we use the royal sandals for more damage you can also swap out the helmet if you want to fight a little more cautiously you can use the assassin hood so you can shoot more often uh, Fort Sterling Cape so you don't get interrupted instead of the Knight Helmet. And there you go, that's a Siege Crossbow. Now, for the Energy Shaper, you're going to go full glass cannon, you're going to be using the Druid Robe. So here's how it works. You're going to activate your Druid Robe, and then your Helmet, and then you're going to spam some Qs at the ground, you're going to press F, and then you're going to hit E, and you're just going to hose down the enemy team when the tanks initiate. And I didn't quite stack my, my damage to 6, but when you do, and you stack your helmet to six, and your boots are going, and you have your beef stew going, everything dies. There is nothing that survives that. Maybe the enemy tanks, if, if for whatever reason they're caught in your tank jump, but essentially this is the highest possible damage besides the brimstone staff that you can deal to enemy players if they are held down in your laser beam. And the cooldown's not so bad, okay? Like, a lot of people want to use Assassin Hood with the Energy Shaper, but the Energy Shaper cooldown, it, it ain't that bad, okay? Um, this gives you plenty of time to reposition, repower. So, you can actually take your time. Like, every time that I cast Q at the ground and I get another stack of Druid Robe, it, like, resets the timer, okay? So, so like, there I am at 5, there I'm at 6. Now I can just wait 3, 4, 5, and then connect, and that would have been 6 stacks on my helmet. It's you, Once you learn the timing, it's very easy, and this de it deals an insane amount of damage, okay? This note that on the tooltip, there's a versus mobs and a versus players damage value, okay? So if you go up to a mob and shoot them and it doesn't deal a lot of damage, just remember, you're gonna, be, you're gonna deal like three times that amount to a player, alright? Now, this one is the sniper build. This is if you want to stream snipe in a ZVZ, or you want to snipe a specific person, or you just want to you just want to kill people one at a time, okay? This is the build for you. You're going to be using the Royal Hood with the Royal Sandals for damage. You're going to be using the Scala Robe to half your cast time, and you're going to be using the Crossbow. Now, there's two alternatives to the Crossbow here. You, you can use Scala Robe with Sundershot into a snipe, and that's going to delete people's health bars. Or, you can use knockback shot when your scholar robe is down, and if you land the knockback shot, if you look here at the tooltip, it reduces your cast time by 50%, exactly the same as your scholar robe, which will allow you to, to spam out more snipes. You can also swap to an assassin hood if you want to spam out more snipes, though having six stacks of royal hood combined with snipe is how this becomes lethal. Alright, if I charge up my helmet, and I charge up my boots, and I get six stacks on a per on, on myself, and I shoot someone with six stacks, they're dead. They will absolutely be completely dead, unless they are a tank or wearing like 8.3 or something ridiculous like that. This is the sniper build. This is how you can kill individual players in ZVZs. All right, I want to talk about a damage, but also a support build, and this is the bow of bad on build. So the way this build works is you're basically gonna sit in the back lines and fire off your Raging Storm and your Q ability. Uh, but it's mostly Raging Storm, so the way it works is you're going to use Assassin Hood to get more Raging Storm spam. You're going to be chilling with your healers or your casters or your other ranged siege peoples, and you're going to feed them with Royal Banner, which reduces the cooldown rate, increases their attack speed, all that fun stuff. You're just going to be using Refreshing Sprint for cooldown reduction, and I, d I don't have the omelet on here because I didn't get it from the shop, but use an omelet, not beef stew. And you're, you're basically just going to chill, and this is the most chill, like, ZVZ, like, position. You're just going to chill in the back lines, fire off your arrows, use your armors, use your cooldown reduction, you know. Uh, and you're just going to, you're just going to shoot arrows from as far distance as possible. And, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty man intensive, so use a limb herscape. I didn't, I didn't put one on. Use a limb herscape. Next up, we have the Mist Piercer build. 
And the way this build works is you're just going to activate your Scholar Robe, spam out your E spells, like so. With Scholar Robe, you can shoot these so fast, and they deal tons and tons of damage, okay? It's so much more than Wailing Bow, and you can shoot them so fast. You have a way to escape, you have a way to do ranged. Then you're going to use your helmet, your Assassin Hood, to get your cooldowns back. And uh, you're also going to activate Royal Sandals if you want more damage, or more escape, or more chase. It is useful in all regards, but with Frost Shot, you have plenty of chase, you've got plenty of poke. Uh, this build, it, like, you can spam this all the time. If if your Zerg has a bunch of these, you're going to be killing people so fast. It's it's an amazing damage dealer. There's no reason anyone should ever use Wailing Bow anymore unless you're extremely broke, okay? Wailing Bow is just completely replaced by Mist Piercer. There's no reason to ever use it. All right, now we have the Permafrost Prism. This is my personal favorite weapon for ZVZ. You're going to be using the third Q ability because you're just going to be AoEing down everything that the tanks touch. You are essentially following the tanks when they jump and when they land. You're going to be freezing that entire circle of people that they have clamped or clumped up for you. And you're going to be dealing so much damage with both Ice Shard and your Ice Crystal. Now you're going to be using the Royal Cowl for mana purposes, okay? Uh, you absolutely need this, otherwise you're going to go out of mana and you're going to be useless in the rest of the fight. Scholar Robe is going to let you spam abilities. You can use Royal Sandals, you can use Cleric Sandals, you can use Scholar Sandals. I like Royal Sandals. Guys, I love the damage. Now, this is important. You need Morgana Cape. You absolutely have to have Morgana Cape, otherwise your damage is going to kind of suck, okay? So the way this build works is you're going to activate your helmet and then your boots and then your armor, then you're going to blink forward with the tanks, freeze your opponents, and then just spam Qs, and this is going to just delete health bars, this is going to absolutely melt people, alright? And now my cast speed's a little slower, so that's when I would back off, because the enemy might be doing their counter push, and you're just going to rinse and repeat until you win the, until you win the war. Alright, now we have some cleanup crew builds here. This is the Claret Blade and the Blood Letter, okay? So here's how it works. You're going to be using Stalker Hood to either deal more damage or unstealth sneaky players using things like Undead Cape or just stealth in general. You're going to be using Hellion Jacket to keep yourself alive if like five dudes jump you. You will absolutely be able to pop this and continue fighting until your Zerg or your army or whatever rolls up and destroys them. You're going to be using Hunter Shoes with Rush for Clarent Blade, though for Blood Letter you'll just be using Refreshing Sprint or Run. Alright, so the way Clarent Blade works is you're going to build up heroic stacks. If you got one, it slows them. If you got two, it silences them. Um, so you want, to, you want to combine that with your Hunter Shoes so that you can silence and slow for longer periods of time. Uh, otherwise, don't worry about it too much. It's, it's, just a, it's just a nice weapon that attacks enemies in a line. Same way as Blood Letter. Now for Blood Letter, you're going to be using the Deadly Swipe for mobility. You're going to be using Chain Slash for the immunity and mobility, or you can always use Shadow Edge. It really depends on how many targets you have. Um, and I like the attack speed buff, Aggressive Rush, because a lot of people just end up giving up, and the faster that I can auto-attack them down, the faster that they die. If there was one spec in the game that I would be a complete master of, knowing everything I know in this game, it would be this one right here. Um, so yeah. Use this blood letter, you can execute people below 40%, it's hypermobile. The face breaker, you can actually use whatever offhand you want. Face breaker has zero downsides. There is no negative anything on a face breaker. They're incredibly cheap. They give you more damage, they give you more defense. What more could you want? Next up on the cleanup crew is the Bridled Fury. So here's how this one works. You're gonna be using the third Q ability, you're gonna be using dash, you don't have to use dash. Uh, I like Deep Cuts for uh, Bridled Fury, actually. Um, now, you don't have to use a Stalker Hood. You could use a Royal Hood, however. Most of your targets are going to be a little bit below 50% life after being dived by the tank and dived by your AoE DPS. Like, this this build, th when I say Cleanup Crew, what I mean by that, these builds are meant to finish off people with low HP. You're going to run in, and you're just going to just gonna clap them, okay? So here's how it works. You're gonna you're you're in the back line, your tanks have jumped in, you're gonna activate your Q ability, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna activate your boots, and when you get near the enemy, you're gonna activate your armor, you're gonna press D on them, W and then E, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna put you back into safety because your E ability will kick you backwards. You have three charges, so you're gonna be doing massive damage. 
and your E ability is going to hit for over 2,000 on players, especially when you shred them with Mortal Agony here. What this does is, if they are below 50% life, they, they lose almost all of their armor, and you deal more damage. You deal more damage with the boots. If they happen to hit you while you have your Cleric Robe active, you're going to be dealing even 30% more damage. When you dash, you're going to be dealing 15% more damage. You're getting 13% damage from your Beef Stew. You're going to be getting, uh, what is this, a whole lot of, uh, like, 18% increased damage from your Q stacks. So, essentially, you run in, and you just pop somebody. You just clap them. They're dead. They're done. They're gone. They're absolutely deleted from the game. Alright? So, that th this is one of my favorite cleanup crew items. So, I'm not fully sure what to call this one. I'm just going to call it the percent max HP debuffer. These are very important to have in your ZVZs, especially maybe, like, smaller ZVZs. The Realm Breaker is a great item for this, and here, this is just my personal, like, picks. Uh, I don't know if many people use this build or not, but this is what I personally use, and I get a lot of effect out of it in Faction Warfare. So, I'm using a Hellion Jacket so I can heal myself when I get surrounded by dudes. I use Royal Sandals so I can initiate very quickly, and I use Scholar Cal so that I can be highly armored and get mana back, because this is a very mana-intensive build. Uh, now, for Realm Breaker, I, used, I just used the second Q because I'm comfortable using it. I want to buff my damage up with Raging Blades. You can also use Adrenaline Boost. Sometimes I use Adrenaline Boost. For the passive, I use the defensive one. But all you got to do is you just, you just run into the front lines with your tank, and then you just slam everybody, okay? And then you start spinning. You just start spinning around. When your HP gets low, you use your defensives. You use your Hellion Jacket, and that's going to keep you alive. And you keep spinning. You keep slashing. And, uh, yeah, so, for those that don't know, Realm Breaker's E, uh, not only does it do a big chunk of damage, but it decreases the maximum health of players hit by it by 20%, which gives your team plenty of time to just delete people, okay? Realm Breaker is very underrated, and it is a very good weapon to use. Alright, another thing that every ZBZ should have is Armor Shredders. In this case, Spirit Hunter is one of my favorite. Now, it's only 45 with an 8.3, but here's the cool thing, okay? So what you do, this is how it works, you're gonna be using the Assassin Hood so you can spam out abilities, Cleric Robes so that you can run in, fire off your missile, and run away, Royal Sandals for more damage and more running, okay? So, I'm using the second Spirit, the second Q, Spirit, 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 you wanna use Inner Focus for more damage, and that's pretty much it, you can, the, the passive doesn't really matter, but essentially what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna stack one Q, and then 2Q, and then you're going to stack your W all the way up, 3Qs, press your F, press your R, press your E, that's going to deal a crap ton of damage to people, um, and shred their armor, and help your team out, and help your tanks out, and help your front line out, and then you're just going to kind of run away, use your helmet to get your cooldowns back, which, uh, there you go, they're almost all back, and then you're going to stack it up again, and again, and, uh, you know, Wait for that boot cooldown. Let's wait for that boot cooldown. And was ah like that? This, if someone stands in this in a ZVZ, they die. <laughs> like especially with AOE. Uh, it, there's a mechanic in the game where the more people that are hit by an AOE, the, the stronger the AOE is. And uh, you're gonna melt people with this. You're just gonna see life bars be deleted. Now we're at the Galatine pair. All right, this one's a really fun one to do. So it's, a, it's also a little dangerous, this is kind of an all-in-one. So the way it works is you activate your helmet, you activate your boots, you're running towards the enemy, you press W, you press R, you hit him with a Q, you hit him with an E, and you just let off this giant nuclear blast that just kills everything around you. Um, and if it doesn't kill everything around you, it reduces their max HP so that your cleanup crew can come in and execute everybody. This, this deletes health bars, this is the scariest thing besides meteors to see in a ZVZ is the Galatine pair. And, uh, you know, you use the Cleric Robe, use the Royal Hood, the Martlock Cape, Beef Stew, of course, and to get out, the, get, to get out alive, you gotta use that Resistance Potion, okay? All right, for healers, it's healing time. The Fallen Staff is the pretty much most basic healing that you're going to be doing in ZVZs. I personally like Generous Heal, but if you want, you could also use Holy Flash if, like, everyone's getting tickled. Okay, I use Holy Orb because it can explode and heal multiple people. It's also instant cast. You just shoot it right out. Everything else doesn't heal nearly as much. Yeah, there's Holy Beam, but that roots you, and you want to be mobile mostly in ZVZs. Um, you can also use Reawaken if people are getting down so that you can get them back up before they get executed. Uh, now, the, what happens is um, a lot of people are going to take damage, and this is where you're going to use Salvation. It, this drops a big healing circle on the ground. People can see it, and then they can stand in it and get nice and healed. 
Hopefully, um, you know, people see it. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. But yeah, your W spell, look at that. It's a huge AoE. It's instant. And of course, your Q spell is generous heal. That's a big fat heal. That's going to save some lives. Use Cleric Robe if you get focused. Um, I think I have the wrong boots on, actually. Um, I Use Scholar. Use Scholar Sandals, not Royal Sandals. Because uh, you want focused runs, so you can't be knocked around. And so you can get your mana back, so I'm sorry. I also use Energy Potion with Omelette and Marlock Cape, just in case I get focused as a healer. Now, for the helmet, the helmet, you can use Knight Armor if you don't want to be knocked around out of your channeling. But I personally use Cleanse from the Mercenary Jacket so that I can cleanse debuffs and crowd control effects from myself and anyone else that I'm standing near. And that's the, this is the most like bare-bones standard healing build. All right, next up are the Wild and the Blight Staff. So the Wild Staff is your defensive option, okay? So for those that don't know Nature Staffs, what you want to do is you want to stack up Qs, your very first Q ability here, Rejuvenation, stack it up on a player, then use your last W ability, Rejuvenating Breeze, and that's going to spread it to everybody so that they're all healing now uh, for three stacks, like this guy here got it too. And uh, now, if defensively, you're going to use Well of Life. You're just going to drop a circle on the ground, and that's going to heal your allies. These people want to duel on the test room. That's all they want to do. I don't want to do it. I'm making videos. Um, <laughs> so now offensively, you're going to actually use the Blight Staff. Now this one, same deal with the Q and the W, but the E, you're going to be running along with your tanks. You're going to be running along with your damage dealers, maybe your cleanup crew. And uh, what you want to do, um, this time I got Scholar Sandals on, is you know you stack up your dots, or I'm sorry, your heal over times. You spread them to your allies. Right? Oh, I'm using the wrong ability there, my bad. But essentially what this does is it's going to use a huge circle around you. It's going to increase your movement speed. It's going to heal everyone around you. But also, um, it's going... I, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this slows people too, right? I thought... Didn't it used to slow? Well, either way, you run with your team and uh, you're just constantly healing them, right? And this is what you want to use for ZVZs. Um... The Cleric Robe keeps you safe, and the Mercenary Hood keeps you cleansed. Uh, there are meme versions where you can constantly reset your cooldowns. I've got builds on my channel, but they're not really ZVZ sanctioned. They're not really ZVZ approved, so they're kind of a meme build. But So use this one instead. Alright, so this is more of a frontline healer. I, I'm calling it the Bully Healer. Uh, it is the Hallow Fall. So the way this build is going to work for you, you're going to be using the Royal Cow so you don't go out of mana because this is very mana intensive. It's actually even more mana intensive if you use an Astral Aegis, which is what you want to use if you're stuck on the front and taking all the hits, because this will make you very tanky. But at the same time, if you, if you feel like you're fighting against a lot of enemy tanks, you really should be using the Sacred Scepter, which will give you enough CC resistance to not be crowd controlled. You're going to be using the Cleric Robe so that you can be immune while you cast spells, and the Scholar Sandals so that you can't be knocked around while you run away and regenerate mana. And the spells you're going to be using is the Holy Flash, because you're going to be AoEing your tanks. You're going to be AoEing as many people as possible. You're also going to be using Sacred Pulse so that you can either knock enemies around or just AoE heal your allies. And of course, the E is an AoE. So you're going to spam, you're just going to spam this on your allies. You're also going to spam your W on your allies, and you're going to spam your E on your allies and enemies. And you're going to do this while you have your helmet active, because like, like that, I casted three spells and I'm nearly halfway out of mana. So make sure that your helmet is active when you're spamming these abilities. Because it is very mana intensive, especially with the Aegis. You won't die as much with the Aegis, but it's, it costs way more. Um, so yeah, that's the Bully Healer build. And finally, we're gonna wrap this up with the most important, most powerful build in ZVZ. The Rat build. Alright, here's how the Rat build works. You're gonna be using a Spectre Hood so that you can reset your armor. Your armor is going to be Assassin Jacket, which gives you good defense. It lets you go invisible so no one can hurt you. No one can see you. No one can see you loot all those bodies on the ground. You're going to use your helmet to get your, <laughs> your armor back so you can hide twice. You want to be able to hide twice. Your cape is the undead cape, so in case someone actually tries to kill you in your rat build, for whatever reason, or maybe you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, 
This will turn you invisible for six seconds so you can escape and live another day to loot those bodies, okay? You're going to be using the Blood Letter with the second Q ability, and what this does is it moves you forward pretty quick. You're going to be using the Dash ability so it moves you forward, and you're going to be using your E ability not to fight, but to move forward. You're going to be using any leather boots with a refreshing sprint. Also, you want cooldown reduction. You don't want damage on these, obviously, because we're not going to be fighting anybody. Well, maybe, as a rat, you know, if someone's, like, on their deathbed, they're, like, one hit away from death, you can get, go ahead and give them a smack. You are a rat, after all. Uh, use that refreshing sprint. Get those cooldowns back. Use that omelet for more cooldowns. Use that resistance potion just in case you get focused by a player. This will buy you enough time to escape. Alright, so this is the ultimate rat build. Also a mist collar because you want more cooldown reduction. So check it out. We have we have our omelet. Um, our our lunging stab is a 20 second cooldown. By default, it is normally a... Um, well, the game won't tell me. So uh, actually, I think I can just open the little uh, menu here and it'll tell me. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. No? Craft this one. Yeah, it won't tell me. But But we got it down to 20 seconds. Um, so, you get the dash, the dash, the dash, the run, you can go invisible twice. Uh, you could also use an invisibility potion instead of major resistance potion, though resistance potion will buy you more time than the invisibility potion. And this is the build that you want to use when you want to get some loot. So, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this ZVZ build video. I'm Soul Benji. thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Also for mounts, I'm on the test drum, so all I have is a riding horse, but you want to use a swift claw or an armored horse, okay? So use one of those, they're not too expensive. Go ahead and just use them. Also put a bag on so you can get some loot if your guild leader allows it. If your guild leader doesn't allow it, you're in the wrong guild. You should be able to loot things, okay? That's part of the game, that's part of the fun. Guys, leave me a like and a comment. When you do both, it is an algorithm cheat code, it is a YouTube combo. I put a lot of work into this video showing you all the best ZVZ builds. So please help me out and like and comment on the video. Also, 80% of you aren't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Get me to 50k. Let's let's beat the official Albion Online channel. We beat all the other channels, um, even though technically they get more views because they are strictly Albion Online related and I spread my games out a bit. But anyway, guys, I really appreciate it. I hope this build guide helped you out. Uh, I will see you in the next video.